Over to now, Jack. There we are. Thank you very much. Well, it is four o'clock, so welcome everyone to this meeting of the Education and Skills Policy Development Committee meeting. Um, we will kick off, as we normally do, with apologies for absence. Please, do we have any, Gareth? Uh, Councillor Fiona Gordon was going to try and join, Chairman. I think she has joined, so I said none, none so far. Lovely. I'm listening, okay, in, thank you I'm listening in, Chairman. Yeah. <laughs> so, sorry, what was that? Was that uh, my sound went funny then? Is, was that Fiona saying? No, she's, she's Councillor Gordon is listening, Chairman. Oh, lovely. There we are. Great. Good. Thank you. Uh, right, the next agenda item is disclosures of personal and prejudicial interests. Can I say that I work full time for the University of Wales Trinity St David and I'm attached to two schools, to Gendros Primary School as a governor and to um, Dylan Thomas School as an advisor at the moment. I, I don't know whether I ought to disclose those two schools because I think it's a, the ordinary work of the councillor, but I thought it's better to do that. Any advice? I mean, you usually only declare if there's a particular issue about the school that you're involved in in the actual agenda. So you wouldn't need to do it every time. But I think, as you, you know, obviously, you know, it, it, you said it once, but at every, at every meeting, unless you particularly see that school mentioned, um, that's fine, uh, Councillor. That's lovely. Thanks, Stephanie. Really helpful. Any other disclosure of interests? Yeah, Councillor Lawson, Chair. Hi. Um, yes, similarly, I'm not really sure um, ab about disclosures, but I'm a local authority governor for Wine Wen School and also for St Helens School. So I'd just like that to be noted. Okay. Yep. Lovely. Thanks, Hannah. Thank you. OK, so can we move on then to the minutes of the last meeting? And I think these minutes are quite notable uh, for, for the reason that they started. The meeting started at 4.50 and is recorded at finishing at 4.51. I, I don't know if that's a record, but I'm claiming it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so can I ask if we are content with the minutes of the last meeting? I move, Chair. Thank you. Seconded? Second. Chair, there is, there is two lots of minutes there. All oh, right, okay. And the second set of minutes. I move again, uh, Mike. Thank you, Jack. Yeah, second. 20th of May. Yeah, second. Yeah. Thanks, Jack. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. So we uh, moving on now to the work plan discussion for 2021-2022. Um, can I ask, as a starting point, if we can just I have a round table if we were in the room just to say who we are quite quickly. I'm conscious that we've got at least one new councillor in the room and there might be other people who are not familiar with the faces on the screen. So can I can I start by saying my name is Mike Dirk. I'm a Cockett Ward councillor and the chair of the committee. Lyndon. On Lyndon. Lyndon. Sorry. On mute. Uh, yeah, so I'm Lyndon Jones. I'm councillor in Bishopston uh, and I serve on the primary school governors. I chair education scrutiny. Thank you. Sam? Yeah, my name's uh, Sam. I'm the uh, the vice chair of education committee. I'm a councillor in Money's Bark uh, and similarly uh, a school governor as well. Jan? Hi, I'm John Curtis. I'm a uh, Councillor for the Penryal Ward. I'm chair of the Labour Group and a governor of two schools. Thank you. Bev? I'm Hi, I'm Bev Hopkins. I represent the Lando Ward and I'm a governor of two schools as well. Thank you. Can we, can we I'm going, uh, the faces I can see on the screen <laughs> might be different for everyone, but the next yeah, person is Ellie Morgan Rees. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Helen Morgan Rees, Director of Education here in Swansea. Thanks, Helen. And then Stephanie. Hi, I'm Stephanie Williams. I'm education solicitor in the legal department and give advice to the uh, committee. Don't Thank forget you. about me. <laughs> Gareth Bosden. Mike Lewis is there. Hi, Jay. Gareth Bosden from Democratic Services. And then Des. Hi, I'm Councillor Des Thomas, represent West Ross Ward. The um, governor of a couple of primary schools and a long-standing member of this committee. 
Thank you, Des. Oh, Fiona Gordon's just popped up. Fiona, can I ask you, please? Hi, thanks, Councillor Fiona Gordon um, um, for Castle Ward, Councillor for Castle Ward. I'm just on my way home from Plandavry, um, so I'm in Cummy for at the moment. So I'm just, so I am listening in, but I'm dropping in and I just pulled over though. Ah, oh, lovely. Thank you, Fiona. And then we've got Hannah Lawson. Hi, I'm uh, newly elected last month as the councillor for Castle Ward and looking forward to working with everyone. Thanks, Hannah. Miles Langston. Miles is on mute. Can we go to Mike Lewis then, please? Yeah, I'm councillor Mike Lewis. I'm the councillor for Mini Park Ward and again, a long standing uh, member of this committee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And Alison Lowe. Alison's Alice, Alice from Democratic Services. Sorry, Jess, she's just live streaming the meeting, so she can't contribute. <laughs> oh, OK, then. So the only one we didn't hear from there was Miles Langston. I don't know if Miles has got a, an issue with his audio. Uh, Lyndon, do you want to introduce Miles? I can do. Miles is councillor in Sorry. Oystermouth and is governor in Oystermouth School. It's not one word, then. My phone is not taking charge. Because it's not plugged in, the car's not plugged in. Oh, yeah. yeah. We've, got, we've got background noise going on there. There we are. So, so I think that's everybody. Is that everybody? Those are the people I can see. So I think that's it. So hopefully that's helpful uh, for a few people. It's certainly Hannah, I'm conscious. Uh, that Hannah is a new councillor, so thank you very much. So the, the next thing is for us to move on to the discussion of the work plan. And, and there's a number of things I'd note here. Uh, first and foremost, I'm delighted to be, to be the PDC chair for the year ahead. And thanks to, to all of you. Um, we've um, had a bit of a backstory to some of the, the content here uh, that Helen will pick up in a minute. Some very important work done by the PDC in the year. So our focus needs to be about building on that foundation and looking to continue that good work that we'll all be familiar with. Um, and also in the education scrutiny context with Councillor Lyndon Jones, we did have some discussion about uh, a range of ideas that, that were wrapped together under the banner of learning champions, um, how to inspire vulnerable learners, particularly at this time as we build out of the pandemic. And that uh, scrutiny focus was to be passed to the chairperson of the Education and Skills Policy Development C Committee, which was Councillor Robert Smith, who is, of course is now the uh, cabinet member. So there's a continuation of that discussion as well to be uh, considered, you know, in the context of the taking a village to raise a child, how we can better understand the issues children and young people face and be led by what works in helping people like, realise their potential and in, in the context of education and uh, skills. So um, we, we, we've seen so many challenges in the last year, uh, lots of opportunities, but lots of uh, issues that have been overcome and understanding vulnerability, I think is, is critical for us. I, I note before I, I pass on to, to Helen, that um, there's a, an important meeting, go, um, uh, sorry, important, um, uh, report going to cabinet tomorrow supporting educational recovery and also that the Welsh Government has yesterday published its programme for government and 10 new well-being objectives uh, one of which relates specifically to education and I'll just read that out it's to continue our long-term programme of education reform and ensure educational inequalities narrow and standards rise so that national overview uh, will marry with our local focus for all schools in Swansea and our links with colleges, universities, employers, etc. So on that note, can I pass over to Helen Morgan Rees, please? Thank you, Councillor Dirk. Um, yes, you quite rightly pointed out really to the crossover between scrutiny and PDC in terms of exploring the theme of recovery after disruption to education here in Swansea. So it was inevitable that both committees really would consider the themes of recovery at some point. And I guess the building on the work um, of a recovery plan here in Swansea is very much something we would want to continue. Um, and I'll 
take you back really to some of the themes that we pointed out um, to the report that's going to cabinet tomorrow in terms of that disruption and the emerging themes as we saw them. So some of the themes that are pertinent for today's purpose are the insecure foundations for learning um, as, a, as a negative impact of, of the uh, disruption to education, the lack of progression for, for learners in terms of disrupted education potentially, and as Councillor Dirk said, in terms of inequity and inequality, um, it's that certain learners had faced more challenge than others during times of COVID. So those three key themes or strands that we've uh, picked up and, and uh, evidenced in our work in the last municipal year in this PDC are absolutely key. And I think doing something discernible about it would be a good way forward for this PDC. Um, so in terms of the um, input from Councillor Dirk in scrutiny, there was um, a badging really of the need to potentially set learners back on the track uh, in terms of learning, motiv motivation and possibly to prevent that risk really of disaffection or disengagement in learning. And I guess in the context of Mayhill, I think it's really important that we consider really that disaffection um, and disengagement is a matter for the whole community. It's not just a matter for schools. So this notion really of community learning champions or community learning mentors is something that is worthy of exploration potentially in this uh, committee going forward. So um, we are looking really at ways of supporting um, that risk of disaffection and particularly um, for those facing more challenge than others. So indeed the ambition of, of learners may have been disrupted and their aspiration uh, in terms of their future progression, not just in terms of education, career, employability and even academic uh, progression may have been disrupted. So it's going back to that theme really of how can a whole community or a village, as, as uh, Mike described it there at, at the start of this meeting, how can communities support uh, and motivate and aspire children and young people um, within their communities within an educational context as well? So I guess the work um, that, that is ahead of us, ahead of the committee, may be to consider all the different agencies that contribute to this agenda. So to contribute a range of partners and agencies and maybe to hear testimony from schools as well as to how they already uh, do this. Now schools in more challenging contexts within Swansea are probably doing this already. So that might be some fertile ground for us to explore and, and to look really at what's already going on. But certainly we need to aspire to get to a position potentially by the end of this uh, municipal year I think there are nine meetings ahead of us, uh, if not less. But if we can get to a position where we've we've got some policy that's developed around this, um, or certainly some consistency of approach and some, um, I, you know, some, some minimum um, requirement really as as to what this would look like in terms of a community champion or a community uh, mentor in respect of learning. So I'll pause there. Uh, comes to Dirk. I think I've said enough in terms of, of um, you know, t taking us from the, the position we were in last municipal year and and looking forward. Well, that's lovely. Thank you very much, Helen. Can can I ask members of the committee for um, impressions based on our previous work, obviously, and on on Helen's summary of evidence uh, as we stand today? Can can we have some perspectives, please? Sorry, Mike, what, what, what is it that you'd like us to do? Uh, perspectives uh, from that summary that Helen has provided there, um, you know, about this way forward for the PDC. Uh, if I, if I, I'll, I'll, I'll go to Lyndon first, please. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Mike, and, and also congratulations on becoming chair and, uh, you know, because I know the great work you did on scrutiny and education and, and actually brought this piece of work to that, that committee. I think it is important because I think as Helen sort of mentioned that some children, children, all children throughout Swansea have faced challenges, 
but some particularly on children with free school meals uh, were on free school meals have faced sometimes greater challenges and to make sure that they were had the right digital uh, uh, equipment to help them and so on and, and how how that could happen and so on so i think it is important and and this sort of work we need to be showing that uh, Yes, the challenges, but the motivation and how uh, we can inspire them as a word that you often use, uh, Chair, uh, to actually, uh, you know, do the best they can. And I think it is important for those children to feel valued. And I think this piece of work will hopefully go a long way to achieve that. That's lovely. Thank you, Lyndon. Um, the, the my use of inspiration, I think, and hopefully this is helpful for members. When I was crashing around Gendros School when I was eight years old, nobody saw me progressing in education. You know, they did on the cricket field, they did in sport, but not in education. So it's identifying that potential early as we can and trying to tweak it out of, of, of students. You know, I was from a fantastic family, all heavily industrialised. Uh, men moved their muscles to earn money. That was my future. But then I turned towards reading and writing, you know. So uh, it, 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 that's where, where so I know I, I can get beside myself with excitement sometimes in this context because I see the success of our most challenged pupils later on when they arrive on the stage of the Brangwyn Hall, sometimes in great adversity. So if we can push their buttons, how do we push more buttons of younger children in similar circumstances? And, and there's a lot of a lot of wide eyed, enthusiastic educators in, in directly in education, teaching staff and non teaching staff, but in business, in technical careers, in, in building, in hospitality in retail in every context. So, so I think that's the motivation. That's where my use of inspiration comes from, perhaps. Um, it, it, have we got any other comments? I can't see any hands up. Hannah? You're on mute, Hannah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, thanks, Mike. I was just going to ask, is there a particular age limit that we're looking at um, targeting with these uh, these proposals? The, the um, from my perspective as chair, of course, officers will jump in. Helen will 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 add value here uh, as well as other members. And um, there are no age limits at all. We'll be talking about sort of cradle to the grave uh, the development of learning, uh, education, and skills. Uh, so that's it. So we are talking about um, you know inspiring children. Uh, I think I'm right to say we've got 93 great schools in Swansea. Um, uh, the special schools, the comps, and and the the junior schools. Um, but that's not the be all and end all. I mean, education, as in going to college and university, is not for everyone. So we want people to find their niche, to find their pathway, to plant seeds for people so they can see a point and a purpose. And not just in school, but beyond the school environment as well. Is that OK, Helen? Yeah, if I come in there, thanks, Councillor Dirk. Just to say, uh, probably looking at key, st key stages two, three, and four as they stand currently. So, so from the age of of uh, seven upwards, year two upwards, up until the um, uh, year eleven period, which is uh, for sixteen year olds. Do we? Um, it, it, uh, we've got, I can't see the name. Oh, Des. Des, can we move to Des, please? Yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I agree. It's the uh, it's the vulnerable people that I think we need to who, who needs our help the most, if I can put it that way. I've been surprised um, going through the the pandemic by the importance that many children put on education. You mentioned your childhood. You know, I go back even even further and and through the decades, I don't think that school pupils have put the importance on education as many pupils have been have put on throughout the academic, uh, uh, through the pandemic. And as I say, I've been surprised and I think that that reflects on a number of young children suffering with uh, stress and mental health problems um, because they realise the importance of education. But it's those uh, the minority that do not 
um, uh, see the importance that I think need our help the most. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, and I think they the vulnerable ones. And if we can find a way of helping those, I think we will um, we will you know give a good service to the uh, to the authority and and more importantly the the children in particular. That's great. Thank you, Des. Um, it might be helpful for me to to touch upon uh, a number of the the ways that that I've looked from the educational scrutiny conversation and the comments then from Helen and from the uh, councillor Jenrina as the then cabinet member, and um, it, it it led us to colleagues will remember to a conversation with Professor Alma Harris at Swansea University. Professor Alma Harris pointed me at Professor Chris Chapman at Glasgow University and to his work on uh, Neighbourhood Scotland and his work on equity and educational effectiveness in Scotland. Uh, and uh, that, that's powerful work, which I think is fair to say has been internationally recognised as an exemplar of best practice, building on excellence in the existing school system. And as Helen alluded to just now, that's our starting point. We've got first class schools in Swansea with excellent cutting edge practice. Um, it, there was also then discussions with uh, but the Barod Substance Misuse Agency Chief Executive Officer in the context of vulnerability. Um, it, what is it like to suffer from uh, an addiction, uh, substance misuse, uh, alcohol, uh, drugs, prescribed drugs maybe? Personally, what is it to live in a household which is blighted with substance misuse issues, right? I, I don't know. So I'm conscious myself as chair not to make assumptions about some of this stuff. And Caroline, the chief executive, couldn't have been more helpful. She said, if the, if we want evidence from Barrod, more than happy to help us. Um, and the Swansea manager in this context would be happy to help as well. Um, then um, I had contact with uh, the police, perhaps, Helen mentioned Mayhill disruption and a tiny, tiny proportion of people involved with that. I mean, one or two troublemakers we are talking about. So the ultimate issue for vulnerability is ending up with uh, antisocial behaviour and a criminal record. And, and we know that we have people who are in and out of prison over decades, sadly, right? So I spoke to police colleagues in my day job with the university, I'm privileged to be um, to, to be um, involved with postgraduate education of senior police officers um, and I asked them about it and I had what was a heartening and surprisingly empathetic approach to vulnerability. Um, it, it's, it, 24% of calls to the police are crime calls. 76% of calls to the police are not about crime, they're about vulnerability. And and the, the uh, those conversations led me to two people. One person who's linked to the National Police Chiefs Council in neighbourhood policing across Britain, and one who is a deputy chief superintendent, who's also uh, has very passionate and powerful memories of growing up on a Swansea estate. OK, so what, what I've tried to do in that kind of discussion is to consider, as Helen said, looking at some of the key partners, so external agencies, if you like, whilst we also uh, look internally at excellence and some of the great people that we have working in, in our schools. Uh, is, that a, is that a sensible, uh, meaningful starting point? Helen, have I covered some of the key areas there from your point of view. I just want to add value to your introduction, really. Yeah, I, I spoke about, I spoke about uh, aspiration and motivation, and it comes from a range of agencies and agencies that might be uh, already involved with schools. So governors themselves are good agents, really, to support and um, inspire schools and, and even to talk to children on occasion about their 
um, pathway in their academic success or indeed their career or how they've worked themselves um, up from um, from school and onwards. So uh, a governor could be an agent, uh, a police officer, a community police officer could be a good agent. Um, and then at the sharp end of things, um, you know, an agency working with substance misuse is another good agent for a certain group of, of pupils. But I guess what we are talking about is the range really of support available to, yes, vulnerable children, but I think it may be a little bit wider than that in, in the sense um, of what COVID has done to all children, um, in the sense that um, we, we need to understand where our schools are with using um, champions or um, I would I would say uh, professional people to come in and, uh, and aspire in terms of employability. Um, whatever the status of a child, whether they're vulnerable or not, I think that should be happening anyway in terms of, of aspiration and inviting a range of agencies in. Certainly as a, as a pupil in school, I was exposed to a range of people coming in uh, to talk to us as pupils uh, about the, the, you know, the potential and unlocking potential in the range of careers uh, and opportunities and, and different you know, occupational pathways. So I think it's it's maybe a little bit wider than vulnerability, um, but it's it's also uh, how the committee wants to, to take this forward, whether it's a focus on vulnerability or, on, or a focus of, on all children. And I think looking at the a range of agencies, no matter what the pathway the, the policy development committee takes, I think looking at a range of agencies supporting that agenda is, is really important. Uh, and I, I don't, I, I mix in my committees up here. I'm not sure whether it was part of the PDC work or educational scrutiny, I think PDC. When we went to Pendra Harvard, I remember being there with a, a few of you, we Bev Hopkins, I remember we had, was having a chat on the day. Uh, blown away was the phrase that people used. Uh, Mrs. Bansley and the former head, Jen, um, they had uh, guest speakers coming in from some surprising agencies. Do you want to learn how to fly a 747? They got a pilot in from Virgin Airlines to talk to the <laughs> to the children. This is this is how you get to do that. Just fantastic. Seed planting and inspirational. Councillor Lyndon Jones. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Chair. Yeah, th that, that was education scrutiny. Yeah. Scrutiny. You've gone off, Lyndon. The 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 audio went off. I I I said I totally concur with what you say and, and it, it was absolutely a fantastic visit and to listen to the work that they were actually doing it was inspirational uh, and uh, you know that was a real good example of trying to encourage children which is what we need to do is that they can do it they can uh, and it means them they can do it rather than somebody else and uh, I think it gives them sort of real encouragement and the stuff that they were doing was 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 second to none and I I, I, I certainly uh, anybody who hasn't been I, I encourage them to go and visit and see what they were doing in the same way uh, in Dylan Thomas school uh, where we went there where uh, they've got the largest number of free school meals in Swansea and yet their attendance records are growing uh, and the work that they were doing by meeting children and uh, pupils on the way in and, and we had uh, different pupils taking us around the schools we were all broken up into small groups and and they were great ambassadors for that school as well so it just goes to show what can be done uh, and uh, in, in, in the schools and we've got some really good examples but we need to share that as well amongst schools uh, because all schools are good at some things but we really can learn to make sure we get the best for everyone. I think that's an important point it's taking the knowledge looking at the evidence and then when there's a learning outcome how do we cascade that to others who might want to learn from that best practice um, so uh, we, um, you, your hand is still up, Lyndon. I think it's a legacy hand. Uh, so we have to plan. Um, we've got 10 meetings in the year. This is the first then meeting proper in, in the, the year. So we've got nine meetings to go. I think I'm right to say that we won't have a meeting in August. I think that's right. And I think there's little point in us looking for educators to come to a PDC meeting in July uh, because we're not going to find many around perhaps you know end of year very busy very challenging and they're preparing to to go for a local holiday let's hope um 
So as we look forward then, um, and again, I'm looking for Helen and everybody support you. Um, it, what we can do is we can set a draft work plan to pencil in some of the key agencies that we've discussed here to, to, to try to get them in so we can start to structure that work plan in a sensible, logical, systematic way for the year ahead. Is that something that we should be doing in this meeting or is it something that we can do after the meeting and then put a draft work programme together? Helen, what do you think? Do we want to try to start pencilling things in now or uh, not? I think from previous uh, PDCs in recent times, I've seen that uh, the agenda in the PC, uh, PDC grows organically from yes. one meeting to the next. And that has worked really well and that has given us a steer then. So rather than pre-populate every meeting for the whole year, it's better to grow it month by month. Excellent. That's sound advice for me, I think. Um, so the, the first meeting for me it would be to go to Professor, the two professors I, I mentioned earlier, particularly Professor Chris Chapman, to, to see if he would be uh, 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 available to help us to shine a light on his uh, outstanding work in Scotland. Um, it, would that be a sensible first baseline for us to consider for the July meeting? Are we in agreement with that? Yeah, Jeff, we can perhaps liaise outside the meeting and then if he can't come, perhaps we can invite one of the other agencies. Invite one of the other agencies. Fantastic. Offer them the September, October, and then we can fill up the gaps as we go along, perhaps. That's great, Gareth. Are we content? Everyone content with that? I, I never like it when Des Thomas looks serious. I, I always, <laughs> that nerves me. <laughs> Thank you, Des. Yeah. Right, fine. OK, so... So I think um, in, from my point of view, it's, it feels like we've set a, um, a baseline of, of a strong baseline based on what we've achieved so far. Um, the cabinet uh, meeting tomorrow is important for support and educational recovery, of course. And um, we've got a number of key agencies externally that we can ask for evidence to inform our approach. And of course, then to build up that work pro programme, to use our Helen's word, organically as we go. Um, can I ask you all to use the power of reflection? If ever you were in a particular position and think, hang on, what about this? Always feel free to text me or email me or, or whatever. You know, like, I think that kind of dialogue does help to take things forward as well. You know, Hannah. Hi, sorry, I'm, I'm being very vocal. I'm, I'm not sure no, if this don't is quite... Don't apologise. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is the appropriate place to for these discussions, but so please stop me if it's not. Um, but I have been having some initial discussions um, on the subject of the, you know, disturbances up in Mayhill, and uh, which particularly affected uh, part of my ward in um, the north of Winewen Road. And I've been having a lot of discussions around uh, Winewen School and around some other uh, agents about, um, you know, tackling some of these issues going forward. Um, I know some of you will know that quite a problem in the area is a problem with motorbikes and scramblers um, and being a bit of a nuisance to the local residents. And uh, I have had someone from a local training um, organization, training company who is from the area, who's from Town Hill, who would like to start up some kind of outreach project for younger people involving bikes and particularly helping them to uh, get more skills, mechanic skills and those kinds of things and maybe channeling some of their enthusiasm for those issues into a more productive method um, of going forward. So I just wanted to bring that to the committee really and say that I'd be happy to um, keep you up to date with those discussions or if committee felt it appropriate, invite him along to, to, to talk to, to you. That, that's excellent. I was wondering where you were going then when, when it started. <laughs> but that's a great example of channeling those energies. I remember doing this years ago with equine training for people when we had the Penland cowboys, you know, uh, tethered horses all over the teach them about horse welfare to look after them properly. So motorbike, that sort of thing. I remember uh, somebody in South Southampton University years ago uh, uh, doing a pre-driver education when car crime was rife in, in the UK. And it was about teaching young people at risk of stealing cars what it means to own a car, 
what an MOT is, what insurance was, what damage and disruption stealing a car actually does to people and families. So it's informing young people who might be very ill informed about the reality. So that, that's brilliant. I'd really like to hear more about that as it progresses, Hannah. Thanks very much. So I think we are uh, in the terms of the agenda. We, we have uh, gone through uh, a work plan discussion and if we don't have anything else to add, can I ask whether there's anybody who has any other business they would like to add, any comments they'd like to make? Uh, because if there isn't, I think it's fair enough for us to draw a line under the meeting today uh, to uh, clarify the date of the next meeting, which is the 21st of July at four o'clock. And if there's nothing else to add, add anyone so as as uh, old Denny, the landlord in the Mile End Inn, used to say, uh, any more for any more before I pull the shutter down. Mm -hmm. So if there isn't anything else to add, can I thank you all for your attendance? Thank you all for showing your support in me and close the meeting and look forward to seeing you next time.